Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Engineering Made Simple. Now as you all know we are studying computer uh, communication networks. Now in that today we are going to study the OSI reference model. In this lecture we will learn the open system interconnect that is the OSI model. Secondly I will give a list of Mumbai University questions asked on this topic. So it will be easier for you to prepare for your theory examination. Now see, let us start discussing OSI reference model. Now as you all know OSI stands for Open System Interconnection Model. Now let us see. An ISO standard that covers all aspects of network communication is the Open System Interconnection Model. It was introduced in the late 1970s. Now ISO is the standard and OSI is the network model. Uh, ISO is the standard meaning ISO stands for International Standards Organization. Now this organization gives various uh, standards regarding to different networking protocols and OSI is the network model. Now what do you understand by the term open system? An open system is a set of protocols that is rules that allows two different systems to communicate regardless even if they have heterogeneous architecture or different architecture. Now next. The same thing is explained here once again. The purpose of OSI model is to facilitate communication between different systems without requiring changes to the logic of the underlying hard hardware and software. Now the OSI model is not a protocol. It is a model for understanding design, understanding and designing different network architectures that are flexible, robust and interoperable. Now it can be used as a basis or reference for creation of different protocols or designing different architectures that is that's the reason it is called as OSI reference model because it is used as a reference or basis for creation of protocol. Now the main purpose of the OSI model is that it allows complete interoperability between otherwise incompatible systems. So it allows it facilitates communication between uh, two communication systems having uh, basically a different underlying architecture to communicate with each other or to allow data transfer between you. So this is how our OSI reference model looks like. So OSI reference model has seven layers namely application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer and physical layer. Now as you can see in this diagram this is device A this also has seven layers. Device B also has same layers and this is the intermediate networks or intermediate nodes which has only the first three layers of the OSI model. Now when whenever a stream of data or information is transmitted from device A to device B, uh, the uh, data packet or information packet moves as, as follows. In device A it moves from application layer to physical layer and from physical layer of device A it passes through intermediate nodes and reaches the physical link layer of device B. From there on when it reaches the physical link layer of de uh, device B, the same data packet is transmitted to data link layer and it is again transferred to network layer, transport layer, session layer and presentation layer and application layer and finally it reaches device B. So what I am going to, what I am trying to say is that when overall data is transmitted from device A to device B, the data packet or information packet at device A moves from application layer to physical link layer and in device B it is the reverse that is the data travels from physical link layer to the application layer. And one more interesting thing to note here is that the two la the, the layers between two different devices communicate using peer-to-peer -peer processes or protocols and in within the same device data encapsulation takes place such as when the data packet arrives at the application layer it moves to application it moves to presentation layer of device a by a process known as data encapsulation data encapsulation is nothing but the data of another layer is passed on to the uh, passed immediately passed on to the layer below it So the figure 1.1 is OSI reference model when message is transmitted from device A to device B. So within the same device data encapsulation takes place that this data application layer packet moves on to the presentation layer of the same device and between two different devices 
peer uh, communication takes place with the help of intermediate nodes and peer to peer processes or protocols now next slide the osi model consists of seven layers namely physical layer data link layer network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer application layer next now the designers of osi model uh, grouped networking functions which were similar and that become uh, the seven different layers of osi model each layer defines a family of functions now what does this mean is that when the designers were de developing this osi model they came up with a layered architecture now how did they decide that these were the layers and these were its functions so what did they do the layers which were having similar networking functions they grouped it together and that formed a layer so this is how each and every layer was developed and the seven layers seven different layers of osi model were formed so each layer defines a family of functions now within the same device each layer calls upon the services of the layer just below it within two different devices example application layer of device 1 communicates with application layer of device 2 that is communication between machines is therefore a peer to peer process using the protocols appropriate to a given layer now this i had explained when i had explained you using the diagram that is within the same device data encapsulation takes place and within two different devices the data transmission takes place using intermediate nodes and peer to peer protocols now this peer to peer protocols we will study separately in the in a different lecture now figure 1.1 shows the layers involved when the message data or information or data packet and how it is sent from device a to device b figure 1.1 i had shown earlier now we will study functions of each layer of the osi model now first layer is the physical layer now physical layer it is the layer 1 now what does the physical layer do it coordinates the functions that are required to carry a bit stream or a physical channel it also deals with the mechanical and electrical specifications of the interface and the transmission medium the second function it also defines procedures and functions that physical devices and interfaces have to perform for transmission to occur third the physical layer is responsible for movements of individual bits from one hop that is node uh, uh, to the next hop now the third is the most important function is that the physical layer is responsible for movements of individual bits from one hop node to the next hop the physical layer is also concerned with the following functions namely representation of bits physical characteristics of interfaces medium data rate synchronization of bits line configuration physical topology and transmission mode now what does this each of the following functions mean we will discuss now what do you mean by physical characteristics of interfaces and medium the physical layer defines the characteristics of the interface between the device and the transmission medium it defines the type of transmission medium now what do you mean by physical medium is that any type of coaxial cable connector such as rj45 or even your optical fiber cable so whichever uh, uh, physical medium we are choosing physical layer determines its properties and the transmission characteristics also now the next point is representation of bits the physical layer data consists of a stream of bits sequence of zeros or ones with no interpretation to be transmitted the bits must be encoded to signals such as electrical or optical if your physical medium is an uh, is a carrier of electrical signal then you will convert it into electrical signal if your physical medium is an optical fiber you will convert the signals into optical signals for transmission now next data rate the transmission rate is the number of bits sent each second is also and at the physical layer that is the data transmission of rate that is kbps or mbps that is megabits per second or kilobits per second the data transmission rate is determined now the next important function is the synchronization of bits 
the sender and receiver uh, not only must use the same bit rate but also must be synchronized at the bit level now in other words the sender and the receiver clocks must be synchronized now the another now another important function is of line configuration now the physical layer is concerned with the connection of devices uh, to the media in point to point communication two devices are connected to a dedicated link in multi point communication link is shared among several devices now physical layer also determines uh, the physical topology of the network now the physical topology defines how the devices are connected to one another to make a network now everyone knows what the, do we mean by network topology or physical topology examples of network topologies are star topology bus topology ring topology and so on transmission mode the physical layer also defines the direction of transmission between two devices that is whether the communication between two devices should be simplex half duplex or full duplex simplex is one way communication that is only one device can send and other can receive and in half duplex mode that two both the devices can send and receive but not at the same time and in a full duplex communication two devices can send and receive at the same time so now we will study functions of the data link layer data link layer the data link layer transforms the physical layer raw data to a reliable link it makes the physical layer appear error free to the upper layer that is the network layer now what does this statement mean when when whenever the data link layer receives the data packet from the physical uh, physical layer it consists of only uh, uh, data bits and there might be some errors in them uh, errors in the encoded data bits so what is the role of the data link layer here is that it performs certain error correction mechanisms in the uh, data packet which it receives from the physical layer before transferring it to the network layer for further processing next the second important function of the data link layer is that it is responsible for moving frames of data from one hop or node to the next node now the data link layer also performs other important functions such as framing flow control error control physical addressing and access control now we will we will learn what the what does this each of the following term mentioned here means now what do we mean by framing the data link layer uh, divides the stream of bits received from network uh, received from physical layer into a manageable data units called frames that is the bits of information which it receives from the physical layer it uh, it makes it in it, it groups them together and makes it into a frame by adding address and control information to the data that it that is basically a framing process now second most important thing it does is physical addressing now physical addressing meaning if frames are to be distributed to different systems on the network the data link layer adds a header to the frame to define the sender and or the receiver of the frame if the frame is intended for a system outside the sender's network the receiver address is the address of the device that connects the network to the next one now the next important function is of flow control now if the rate at which the data absorbed by the receiver is less than the rate at which data is produced by the sender then the data link layer imposes a flow control mechanism to avoid overburdening or overwhelming of the receiver now in order to understand this suppose we have a transmitter and a receiver now a transmitter is sending uh sending data bits at a higher rate or data frames to be more precise at a higher rate than the receiver which is tuned to receive at much a slower rate so in if the if there is a transmission rate mismatch between sender and receiver the flow control mechanism is just used to correct that now the second most important aspect that we discussed in the first point is that the data link layer transforms the physical layer Raw data to a reliable link. A reliable link means what? A link which a link which consists of data, which is data frames, which is free from any errors. So 
Now we will study what is error control. The data link layer adds reliability to the physical layer by adding mechanisms to detect and retransmit damaged or lost frames. It uses mechanism to recognize duplicate frames. Error control is normally achieved through a trailer attached at the end of the frame. Now, what does this header and trailer means is that if you have a data frame, it consists of bits of data. It is framed in appropriate manner. There is one part of it called as header and one part of it is called as trailer. Trailer is at the end of the frame and header is attached at the beginning of the frame. The header may consist of some addresses. Now here in the data link layer, we can consist of address which, which is known as the physical address and trailer is used for error cor correction mechanism. Now we will study all those things in detail once we proceed with the course. Now the last but not the least, the most important function is the access control. Now whenever two or more devices are connected to the same link of communication, data link layer protocols are necessary to determine which device has control over the link at any given point of time. Now we will study the functions of the network layer network layer which is the layer 3 of the OSI model. Now, the network layer is responsible for source to destination delivery of packet possibly across multiple links. So, the network layer performs the task of transferring data in the form of packets from source to destination that is from one network to another. The network layer performs the task of logical addressing when the data packet crosses the network boundary and reaches another network. So, other responsibilities of the network layer include the following. Uh, first responsibility is logical addressing. Second responsibility is of routing the packets. Now, we will study what is logical addressing. The physical addressing which is implemented by the data link layer handles the addressing problem locally. Now, if the packet passes the network boundary and it, and it wants to travel to some another network, now for that we need another addressing system to help distinguish the source and destination system. Now the network layer again adds some header to the packet coming from, coming from the data link layer that among the other things include the logical address of the sender and the receiver. Now all these type of different addressing schemes will be discussed in a separate video in the further course of lectures. Now second most important aspect of the network layer is routing. When independent networks or links are connected to create inter-networks, inter-network meaning network of networks. One prominent example of network of networks is is of or internet network is, a, is the internet system because it is a combination of various heterogeneous networks. On the large network, the connecting devices are called as routers or switch which switch the packets to the final destination. So routing means it it is a switch which transfers the data packet from one network to another that is from source to destination. So the network layer does this task and performs the, gives the uh, appropriate path for the data packet to travel or to travel in, to be more precise we can use the word route from source to destination. So network layer performs these following functions. Now the functions of transport layer. The transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery of the entire message. A process is an application program running on a host PC. Now, as we have seen, the job of the network layer is to see the source or source to destination delivery of the individual packet. It does not recognize any relationship between those packets. The network layer treats each data packet individually, although each piece belongs to a separate mesh, whether or not it does. But now, what the transport layer does is to the transport layer on the other hand ensures that the whole message arrived intact and in order overseeing both error control and flow control at both at the source and at the destination level. Now the transport layer contrary to network layer also tries to establish and check whether there is some relationship between the data frames or packets which are 
sent subsequently from transmitter to receiver. Mm. So other responsibilities of the transport layer include the following. The transport layer also in performs the task of segmentation and reassembly of the data packets, connection control, flow control, end-to-end -end, and error control. Now we will discuss each of the following. Now what is service point addressing? Now computer often runs several programs at the same time. For the same reason, source to destination delivery means not only from one computer to the next but also from some specific process that is running program on one computer to a specific process that is running program on the other computer. The transport layer header must include the type of address called as service point address or port address. The network layer gets each packet to the correct computer. The transport layer gets the entire message to the correct process on that computer. Means in simpler terms, uh, the transport layer uh, is a, does does the more does the more most of the precise, most precise work of source to destination delivery, but it deals with the processes. That is, it will deliver to the exact application the data which it is looking for onto communication system. Now, second important task is of segmentation and reassembly. Now, as we know, a message is divided into transmittable segments with each segment containing a sequence number. This ena these numbers enable the transport layer to reassemble the message correctly upon arriving at the destination to identify and replace the packets that were lost in transmission. Now, connection control. As the name suggests, the transport layer can be either connectionless or connection oriented. A connectionless transport layer treats each segment as an independent packet and delivers it to the transport layer to the destination machine. A connection oriented transport layer makes the connection with the transport layer at the destination machine before delivering the packets. After all the data packets are transferred, the connection is terminated by the transport layer automatically. Now, flow control. Like in the data link layer, the transport layer is also responsible for flow control. However, flow control at this layer is performed to at the end to end. That means at both at the sender's end and at the receiver's end also across a single link. <coughs> error control. Like in the data link layer, the transport layer is also responsible for error control. However, error control at this layer uh, at this layer is performed process to process rather than across a single link. The sending transport layer makes sure that the entire message, message arrives at the uh, receiving transport layer without error that is damage, loss or duplication of frames. Error correction is usually achieved through retransmission. <coughs> now let us study the functions of the session layer. The session layer is the network dialog controller. Dialog meaning the communication between the two uh, different communication systems. So it is nothing but it establishes, maintains and synchronizes the interaction among communication systems. The session layer is also responsible for dialog control and synchronization. Now let us understand these functions in detail. Now as we have studied that the main function of session layer is to is that it is responsible for dialog control and synchronization. Now, the, by dialog control, I mean that the session layer allows two systems to enter into a dialog. It allows the communication between two processes to take place in either half duplex, one way at a time, or full duplex, two both two way communication mode. Now, second most important thing is of synchronization. Now, the synchronization is explained here. The session layer allows us a process to add checkpoints or synchronization points to a stream of data. Now, next. Hmm. Now, what do you mean by synchronization exactly? Let us understand with the help of an example. Now, if a system or communication system is sending a file of suppose say 2000 pages, then it is advisable to insert checkpoints after every 100 pages to ensure that each 100 page unit 
out of those 2000 units is issued correctly and they should be acknowledged independently in case if some uh, failure happens uh, and if a crash happens during when the document is transmitted when it is at page number 523 then the only pages that need to be resent after system recovery are the pages 501 to 523 as the crash occurred or the communication failure occurred when the, the system was sending the data packets at page number 523 so this is nothing but uh, synchronization so basically it is adding of checkpoints to prevent the wastage of bandwidth to in communication now next layer we have is the presentation layer the presentation layer is concerned with the syntax and semantics of the information exchange between the two systems now as you all know by now we are we are dealing with the exchange of information from one machine to another machine within the same network or heterogeneous networks so here what the, what the word syntax means is that now if according to particular protocol if it says so first thing 8 bits are for user data 8 bits are for control information and 8 bits are for error correction so that is nothing but the syntax given by all the format given by the protocol semantics means if you if you have a data stream or data frame what does a group of bits signify and what and how do we interpret it is nothing but the semantics of information so the presentation layer is concerned with the syntax and semantics of the information or the data frames which are interchanged between the two systems Now, the presentation layer is also responsible for translation, compression and encryption. Now, translation. Now, what do you mean by translation? The processes that is running programs on the two communication systems or two computers usually exchange information in forms of characters, strings, numbers and so on. The information must be changed to bit streams before being transmitted because different computers use different encoding systems the presentation layer is responsible for interoperability between these in, uh, different encoding methods. The presentation layer at the sender changes the information from its sender dependent format into a common format. The presentation layer at the receiving machine changes the common format into receiver dependent format. That simply means that the receiver changes uh, the common format to the format which it understands. Now another thing which is the which it does is of uh, encryption uh, so encryption is nothing but if you are carrying some private information or a confidential information a system must be able to ensure its privacy encryption means that the sender transforms the original information to another form and sends the resulting message over the network now the receiver on the other hand can perform uh, the decryption process which is opposite of encryption to get the message or data frames in the original form back. Now compression. Now as you know uh, memory is a costly resource and sometimes uh, due to various error control flow control mechanisms we need to add external overhead on the data before transmission. Now, so uh, now we, one more thing we need to do is that in order to save our memory resource, data compression is used. Uh, and essentially, in uh, networks, we talk about saving the bandwidth of the network, bandwidth of the communication uh, media. So, uh, data compression reduces the number of bits contained in the information. The next and the final layer of the OSI model which we are going to study is the application layer. Now the application layer enables the user which which can the user can be either human or software to access the network resources. It provides user interfaces and support for services such as remote mail, remote file access and transfer, shared database management and other types of distributed information services. The in more simpler terms, the application layer is responsible for providing services to the user. So as you can see, when you switch on your PC, you see an operating system. So 
this is nothing but the, the operating system is an application layer uh, protocol uh, which helps us to access uh, the functions which are provided by our personal computer. Similarly, when you type www.google.com on the internet, a uh, web application server by the name of www that is World Wide Web that is internet server or web server from Google will allow us to access the content or web pages which are stored in which are stored in its database. Now the application layer is responsible for file transfer, data data directory services and email services. So for example, as I explained to you earlier, a web browser is an application that displays internet content using hypertext transfer protocol. So HTTP is also an application layer protocol. Now I will list few university questions, Mumbai University questions which were asked in your papers, theory examination. Explain the OSI RM model and functions of each layer. Here RM is nothing but reference model. So they have used a short form here. It was asked in Mumbai University 2019 for 10 marks. Now second question which they had asked is in the short notes part. Write short notes on OSI model which was asked for 5 marks on May 2000, in May 2019 paper. Now uh, they had asked one more question on this topic. They had asked explain OSI model, consider a source machine, destination machine and some intermediate nodes for the description. So for all these three questions, one thing is common that you need to explain what is OSI model, who developed it, what are its uh, elements, you need to draw the diagram correctly and explain the functions of the each of explain e the layer explain each functions of the layers of the OSI model that we discussed. So these are textbooks I recommend uh, for this subject or for this course. So if you like this video please do like share and subscribe my channel. Click on the bell icon to get notification of all my latest uploads. And please give me your valuable feedback in the comment section below. Thank you. Meet you all in the next link.